Hello everybody, this is Shane R. Monroe from Review Lagoon and NVIDIA Shield Zone. We're going to be looking today at the Chinese GPD knockoff handheld Android, but it looks like a 3DS device. Right, so first of all you have fantastic things like this box, which in itself is a work of art. Um, you get some sort of Chinese wisdom on the back, you get uh, this weird logo on the front which doesn't mean anything I don't think. Now I've already pulled this thing out so this isn't a proper unboxing but inside the box uh, you get the regular stuff, you get a little uh, micro USB charger, probably a cheap crappy uh, charger there. Then of course the unit will open in a minute. Inside you actually get a set of screen protectors which is cool and then a very uh, you know crappy English type thing that kind of gives you an idea what's going on and yeah, some good English GPD protection to fix card I love uh, I love the interpretations um, that kind of gives you an overview of the device yeah we don't need that and ditch that I'll look at the actual unit itself so this runs about 160 bucks from your favorite importer. Um, I've seen it cheaper, I've seen it more expensive, but essentially this is what you're looking at. Now if you're thinking, my goodness, that sure does look like a 3DS. Um, you're right, let's see if I have my 3DS in here to throw out real quick. Oh, oh. Got my kid's Pokemon. Oh. And so, uh, yeah, you could probably be fooled at first look. What do you think? All right, well that's enough of that. Let's take a look at the unit. Um, so back here we have the R1 and R2, uh, L1 and L2 buttons. As you can hear, they're very clicky, which is kind of annoying. They're, they're not what I would consider the greatest buttons. There's a micro SD card slot. There's a USB uh, charging slot, as well as a, a data slot that you can access the card, and HDMI out, which is very cool. Uh, headphone jack. There's absolutely nothing on the sides. There's some Stra uh, strap holders, and of course, you have to have Morky's barking in the middle of my uh, any of my videos. No cameras or anything. You'll also notice there's really nothing on the bottom, nothing on the side. It looks like there's a small microphone port right here. Um, so you open this guy up, and that's where it stops being a 3DS, and it becomes something more. It becomes this uh, great Chinese knockoff 3DS-looking Android device. So what we have here are two analogs. Um, these feel very much like um, the uh, PS Vita's analogs. They do not push in. Instead, the buttons for L3 and R3 are here on the side. Kind of weird. Um, but these these feel they feel like PS Vita's with slightly lesser quality. Um, let's see. We have your standard fire buttons over here. Your face buttons. You've got your D-pad. The D-pad's not bad but it's not great it's it's an average d-pad which is better than a lot of d-pads quite frankly start and select a back and a home button for the Android functionality uh, volume rockers power a function key and a game mapper control which uh, we'll try to look at later a couple of speakers here matte finish kind of hides the fingerprints fairly well and of course you've got the screen which we'll see more here in just a minute um, again you know this is a cheap Chinese knockoff. You've already, you can already see I've lost one of the rubber thingies. It's going to make me mental. Um, but the hinge is actually multiple position, just like a 3DS. The hinge is actually fairly strong. I mean, there's no real wiggling in the screen. It feels fairly durable. All right, so what we need to learn the most about this machine is, is it fast enough to run a multitude of emulation and Android games? And is the screen great? Those are the real things you're going to look for and pay for in a device like this. Um, there's a little creak. Uh, I guess you can't hear it now. You know, there's a little creak in the plastic. Like I said, this is not um, this is not super high grade stuff. So I, you know, keep in mind when you're paying for it, it's not a $200 device. It's more like a $140 device. So with the power button, I think I shut it all the way down before. All right, and um, I'm gonna try to do my best 
to, I'm going to go ahead and bring the lights down here a little bit. Bring us a little closer in on the screen. There we go. Hopefully you'll be able to see it better. Here, let me move this. I want you guys to be able to get a good idea of the screen quality and keep the reflections off. I'll tell you what, I am, of this whole product, I am most impressed with the screen. It's very, very clean, it's sharp, um, and it's bright, as you'll see in a few moments here, as soon as it's done booting up. This is a nice cold boot, it does go to sleep, it does uh, suspend, so you don't always have to go through this. Battery life is actually pretty good, I've only had to charge it once or twice since I've gotten it. Um, so it's pretty easy on the juice or it's got a really big battery. Oh, and so there you have it. That's why it was powered off. All right, well, we'll just quickly plug it in. This is what you get for not planning your reviews properly. All right, so now we're back to charging. So uh, who's this device for? That's, a, that's the first question. Um, for those of you who maybe were in love with the Shield tablet, or the uh, Shield Portable. You're looking for an emulation device. You're looking for some uh, basic Android gaming and uh, some classics. You're going to be in good shape. What this uh, also does is it also allows you to game stream. So if you've got a really nice or more dogs barking. Yeah, this is the life I lead. So as you can see, the screen is actually very nice. It's very bright. It's clear. Let me see if I can get you a good shot of the screen while my dogs are barking. Okay. The letters don't look mushy at all. It looks very crisp. Um, you can These very, very small uh, letters, you can actually read. You know, it's probably pretty hard on the camera. Now, I have done a little bit of... Uh, aftermarket modification on this thing in terms of adding some new software but I'll try to point out some of the differences myself um, of what I've changed and what is uh, built into the system sorry the barking dogs make me crazy give them something else to do alright so essentially here on the main menu this is their own custom launcher this is Android 4.4 this unit has uh, 32 gigs of memory, and of course the TF card has, um, I have a 64 gig card in here as well. You'll notice the standard sorts of things you would see on Android, uh, your Wi-Fi connection, your uh, clock, battery charging, the standard sort of thing. Um, using the D-pad, I'm again, I'm gonna try to kind of keep this close if I can, so you guys can get a really good look at what's in here. So first of all, this being from uh, China, this thing is loaded with piracy tools. You know what? I'm going to set it down if I can. Uh, this thing is absolutely loaded with uh, tools to pirate stuff you don't own. So I'm going to give you the standard disclaimer. Um, laws vary from country to country. While this may be legal in China, it may not be legal in your country of origin. So uh, here we, along the top, we have emulators. We have games, which can vary between Android games and some other stuff. We'll get to that. Applications. Uh, I've added a lot of these applications, right? There was probably one screen um, before I added. And this, is, this is what you would consider the app launcher, right? Or the app drawer. Um, a lot of this stuff came with it. YouTube came with it. Um, TuneIn Radio system update uh, it comes rooted by the way it's got basic root soul caliber did not skype quick pick showbox we'll talk more about that in a minute it does come with the google uh, play store built in so that's cool um, i added that emulator netflix came installed music match uh, mx player came installed cody came installed hulu Game Center, Facebook, ES Explorer, a regular Explorer, Downloads was already here, BBC News, a browser, Aptoid, and uh, I don't even know what that AOL is saying, I'm afraid to launch it. And then uh, finally we have settings, so this sort of replaces your basic settings, although 
the clever man will find settings up here, like in the standard Android location. So yes, the pull downs work, the notifications work, uh, just like you would in Android. Uh, it does rotate. I don't remember how this behaves if it's rotated, but the um, if you do rotate the device, it does understand rotation. Uh, let's see. So settings, there's all sorts of stuff that comes with it. It comes with a little video guide, which I thought was kind of cool to kind of introduce you to um, the uh, features of it. All right. So it's it's sort of a sales pitch trailer. Um, so they're going to tell you all about it. Yeah, who cares? That's probably why MX players on. So you have a back button, home button. All right, the home button will take you to whatever screen you're on. Uh, and yes, you can use uh, the touchpad. The screen is a touch control. So you can go in and uh, monkey with your brightness, things of that nature. So it goes up, it starts to wash out when you get too bright. So I like to kind of keep it a little low. There's parental controls, basic system information, um, yeah, what you would expect to see. Storage, it'll tell you what's on your internal uh, memory as well as your, what they call TransFlash, which is just micro SD. All right, so applications or applications. If you have Android, if you even if you have iOS, um, most of these applications are just regular old applications. We'll look at a couple more uh, specific ones in a minute. Games, uh, we start off with a handful of Android favorites, uh, Riptide G2, uh, GP2, um, B, uh, Beach Buggy Racing, uh, there's a handful of these, and like I said, some of these are Android games, and some of them are like emulated games. The emulation hides very well in here, you don't tend to see the emulation as it's going around. There's a couple of things here though that'll be interesting for us to look at, this playable and gamepad assistant. We're gonna get back to that. And finally, emulators, the venerable happy chick, which is the all-in-one piracy tool with emulation, which, you know, probably steals all your data and sends it to China. And we have this KO game box, which is something that's actually kind of cool, and I might actually export this app so I can try it on some of my other devices. And it comes with the free PPSSPP emulator. Of course, I've got the, the full version, the gold version. Now, down at the bottom, you'll also notice that uh, this is, uh, uh, download area if you go to arcade there's yet another curated list of games uh, these are all using um, I think final burn alpha so the only thing you're gonna see here are probably um, Capcom games you know the ones that people tend to like King of Fighters that sort of thing when it says arcade it doesn't mean Donkey Kong and Pac-Man and you do have the ability to add items to this menu and you can also, um, well, we'll get to that in a minute, right? But uh, if it doesn't work with uh, FBA, it will not launch from here. So if you went and got Robotron or, or um, Pac-Man and stuffed it into the correct folder, uh, it would show up on here, but it wouldn't run. So there's probably some way to go in there and hack it to use MAME instead, but I don't know. I haven't played with it that much. Next up is N64, and so, uh, of course, again, these are all, you know, nice and illegal ROMs that they pre-install for you. Very nice of them. So, uh, we'll, we'll look at some of these more specifically later. Um, Super Famicom, so essentially, you know, Super NES, and again, a lot of the venerable favorites are here, already pre-installed. You don't have to download it. You know, Chrono Trigger, um, uh, Castlevania, Super Mario Kart, so they threw a lot of items in here to get you started. Next is Dreamcast. The only Dreamcast game that they have on here is WWE. Um, it does not run fantastically. It runs okay. Uh, but you can put other ROMs in here, apparently. I have not done so. And finally, PS1 comes with Raiden built in. Uh, and I don't remember which PlayStation emulator it uses, but again, it tends to keep uh, the emulation side hidden. It wants you to kind of think these are all part of the deal. So you can also change between um, whether you're looking at your flash, your internal memory, or your TF card, right? So there's also these same folders exist on your uh, TF card, so you can automatically map these over. So that's kind of cool. That's a neat little thing. Let's go back to flash. All right, so for those of you who have not seen Happy Chick and the great amount of piracy involved here, so Happy Chick is a, uh, don't worry, it'll rotate back. Happy Chick is a, um, 
Yeah. So of course the phone rings, the dogs bark, nothing we can do here. Uh, I don't need the update. Let's see if I can get this to rotate because I'm pretty sure Happy Chick was one that rotated. Uh, maybe it didn't. Alright, that's fine. We can do it from here. So essentially every game on the planet is, is available in here somewhere. Uh, Android games, um, <laughs> DS games, right? So it tells you right here. It's for Android, it's Arcade, it's NDS, it's N64, it's PSP. Um, so all of these are available for download, right? They show in blue, right? If you've already got them, then they show up in orange. So the ones that they were showing you on the other menu also appear in here, and you could start playing them, right? But uh, to show you just how easy the piracy is here, um, there's no going and searching for ROM sites or any of that weird stuff. Uh, literally, you can just hit download on Super Mario 64. It'll ask you where you want to download it from, and you push the button, and it downloads it. Next thing you know, it'll come up and say start, and you play it. It's really just that easy. So it's really what I would consider sort of the ultimate piracy device for those of you who want to be emulation junkies and pirates at the same time. <clears throat> if you don't own the game, whatever. As you can see, uh, right now it's ready to start, so I can hit start. And it launches the game. All right. I haven't actually launched this game, obviously, because I just downloaded it, but there you go. Let me turn the sound up a little bit. Hello. There you go. See? All ready for you to play. It's crazy what they can get away with in, Ch in China. So we're going to hit home. So Happy Chick has pretty much everything in it. Um, PPSP... Uh, PPSSPP is the same as you've played on Android, not really anything to go over there. But let's look at this KO game box. This is yet another interface to piracy. Um, this one's not quite as well organized. Um, but you can see here, uh, it automatically detects the system as an Xbox controller. So Android picks it up and uses it. So anything that can use an, an Xbox controller is built in and ready to run. So you've got different categories, you've got series for you, as well as games that have just been added to the system, and of course some basic settings, you can check your storages. Again, this thing was piecemealed together with pretty much every single possible way that you can pirate software. Um, so like for example, let's say we go back here and we look in um, uh, role playing for example, right? So they've curated a list of role playing games. Now these are not built in, but of course they'll download and you won't think twice about it. Final Fantasy, there's titles you've probably never heard of unless you're a big Japanese game uh, playing fan. Um, Dead or Alive is on here, it's, it's nuts. So if you go down to um, like the series, right, so this is arcade games top 10. So they've got, you know, 10 different, you know, games for you to choose from here. Raiden's already installed, etc, etc. So it really shields you from the emulation hassles. Alright, and then of course you've got, you know, like Retro, which is funny because check out some of the offerings here. Um, so Retro to them is Pac-Man World 3. <laughs> um, yeah, so a lot of this is clearly not Retro. A lot of it's PS, uh, P Gaming, Little Big Planet, and again, you can just just download all this stuff, you know, if you're conscience and your your legal. Uh... Oh my goodness gracious sakes, alive! Now my phone's ringing. You're very tenacious, you know that. That means I didn't answer mom's phone twice because I'm in the middle of shooting a video. Oh well, somebody else called her. What's going on? Have you tried plugging it into the computer? All right, well, let me finish my video and I'll run something over for you. How about that? You can't live without your phone. All right, I'll talk to you in a little bit. I love you too, bye. 
So now I get to edit. All right, so, um, yeah, so there's also, trust me, you could sit here all day and poke through the endless amounts of stuff that they give you to pirate. Untold Legends, you recognize all this stuff, I know. Bomberman. And again, like I said, they, they conveniently hide it all behind um, these interfaces, right? All right, so let's back out of here. Sorry. Let's back out. Let's back out. Yeah, I'm sure we want to quit. So as you can see, um, these are all just bolted together. So if we go down to arcade, there's really not much to see here. These are this is just Fireburner Alpha, uh, Fireburn Alpha playing standard gaming, you know, standard SNK Capcom games, right? Cadillac and dinosaurs you've seen it a million times, right? No big deal there. N64 runs extraordinarily well on here. Um, so just as an example here, um, I'm going to pick something that's not going to get me my video. Uh, get Nintendo pissed off at me, so I'm going to run Ridge Racer. No, oh, I saved my game from last time. So here, as you can see, it runs very smooth. Sorry, I'm really I'm playing from behind the camera, so you'll have to forgive me. But it's nice and loud. It plays very very well. Like I said, N64 plays great on this hardware, and the speakers are actually quite loud, if not a bit tinny. Okay, so that actually plays very well. So N64 is a, is a good platform to play on here if you're interested. Uh, of course, um, Super Nintendo, of course, it's absolutely great as well. Um, no problems here. I'll just run a Batman game. Again, I'm not going to run Nintendo games because they get all pissy. All right, so again, it picks it up as an Xbox. And, of course, most of these games are, you know, 4x3 orientation, so... And you know you got the start buttons down here uh, at the bottom. So as you can see, it works very well to play. Let's see if I can get into some actual game here. Now a lot of these emulators will be in a, a little bit smaller screen. I'm not sure if they do that for speed, as you can see. Uh, but again, you know this is a, this is a four x three game to begin with. As you can see, it plays great. It sounds good. I'm sure, I can hit him right. So very nice, very nice. Uh, so if you're going to be playing um, uh, Super Nintendo, you're in good shape. So you're probably more interested in things like Dreamcast and PlayStation 1. So let's take a look at uh, the Dreamcast emulator. Of course, Dreamcast is uh, one of the great cult classics. How, can you make more noise while you're behind me, please? This is how I have to do videos, with noise, dogs barking. All right. So this is uh, what WWE, I think. We'll find out in a minute. So you can get an idea is exactly how well Dreamcast stuff plays on here. It's actually not that bad, but I mean, Dreamcast and PlayStation One should be decent on this sort of hardware. Come on. Gotta wait. Oops. Didn't want that. Over an intro, an intro, an intro, an intro. Yes, move along. No VM, yeah, press start button to save a game, blah blah blah. Alright, so it's got some video playback at the beginning. Do arcade mode. Pick the defaults. I'll try to get a little closer to the screen so you guys can see it. Turn the sound down a little bit. So yeah, you can see it's not too bad, right? For Dreamcast anyway. I have no idea how to play this, so you'll have to forgive me if I'm a re art hard. All right. Anyway, just so you can see how the thing runs and the frame rate and whatnot. Not too bad. Oops. All right, so that's Dreamcast. Let's take a look at um, 
PlayStation 1 with Raiden. Again, it pops up and it knows that it's an Xbox controller. Uh -huh. Moving on. And PS1 looks just fine on here. I think even the more demanding ones will be fine on here. I haven't gotten anything um, super high-end on here yet, but uh, for the basics it plays just fine. It, it, it's right, okay? You've seen it before. It plays very well. Alright, good enough. Alright, so that that takes care of the emulator section. Now we get to go on to games. So um, let's take a look at something like Riptide GP2. This is something fairly simple to play. It's easy to see the graphic qualities. Um, to just see what sort of unit this is. So you'll see the water effects and all that good stuff. As you can see, the water effects are great, frame rate's great, looks fantastic, playing with the analog stick. I know you can't see that. Oops, sorry, I was looking at the camera. All right, so it plays great. get a jump here so you guys can see it's uh, it looks great right it looks just fine it'll be perfect perfect for Android gaming uh, yeah we don't, we don't need to see like anything else on here so applications um, there's a full Aptoid um, store right so you do have the uh, Google Play store but you also have the Aptoid store which is actually very nice um, it gives you, uh, it's, it, like I said, it's essentially a replacement for Google Play. And in some ways, it's actually kind of superior. Um, so it'll handle updates for you. It'll let you track your downloads. Um, let me see. Let me go to home here. So you can get editor's choices. So again, it's, it's an app store, right? Use your fingers, scroll through, pick up apps. I don't know if these are pay or not. I don't think they are. Um, but again, you've got another means of getting Android apps. Basic browser, nothing to get excited about. Um, I did put some other emulators on, like Drastic, which I'm not going to show because I do not want to get my video banned. Uh, Facebook's not going to be any treasure to work on on here or any other social media. Hulu's great. Um, I think I put Plex on here. Plex works great. The Play Store works great. Um, here, I'll show you Soul Calibur. That's actually worth taking a peek at. This is the uh, Android native version, not a Dreamcast or a GameCube emulator version. So this is the uh, one you buy in the Google Play Store. Just to kind of give you an idea. You know, this is a pretty healthy game in terms of processing power required. To give you a little nice close screen. Huh? The buttons, by the way, the face buttons are great. Like I said, the D-pad's not the best, but it's definitely not the worst I've ever used. Man, it looks great, right? Kick her ass off. Yeah, off she goes. All right, so that's an an another Android game. Uh, again, you do have some basic root. Okay, so there's a couple of things I do want to show you in here, uh, specifically. Uh, okay, so Moonlight. So Moonlight is the uh, free, non-NVIDIA version of uh, the game stream. So if you have a PC that's equipped with a GeForce card, a GTX type card, you can actually stream from your PC to here over wireless. And alright, so now we're in the game streaming. Let me see if I can get some light out of here. Make this a little clearer for you. So these are all the games I have available to my from my PC to game stream. And we'll just go ahead and throw in Witcher 3. Game of the year, game of the decade. All right, so what's going on right now is uh, it's transferring control over to the computer and the computer setting up a streaming session which will stream over the Wi-Fi and allow me to play 
Witcher 3, powered by my computer, but streaming to this device. And all the buttons match up and everything is fantastic. This does take a few moments to get started. And if you take a look up at my computer, you'll see that it's actually launching the game as well. All right, so we'll go back down here, that's what you care about. really good view. Yeah, gather before you. Let's move on. And then, here we go. And here we have Witcher 3, looking as gorgeous as ever. Go ahead and run around a little bit. Let's see how clean this guy is. We'll jump off, roll and land. Let's go check out some of the countryside. You can see it plays just groovy. Looks fantastic, doesn't it? Right, so we got all of our little superpowers. And there you go. That's game streaming to this thing. Works pretty pretty darn good, doesn't it? Alright, so that's it for the game streaming part. Alright, so um, the other great thing about this, so it's great for emulators all the way up to, now I'm going to tell you right now, if you, this will not play God of War. Alright, if you're looking for a PSP God of War machine, this isn't it. It will play other PSP games very well, but it's this is not a heavy hitter for PSP games, so keep that in mind. Uh, so the other really neat thing about this is, as an Android gaming machine, is the fact that it's got a built-in game mapper. And this is the sort of thing where you'll find an Android game. I'll go back to games here and see if I'm... Um, uh, let's see... Um, oh, well there was something else. To sh there's some other things to see here, but we'll get to that in a second. So if you run a game and it doesn't support uh, the... Um, controller right out of the box, you can actually map it. So let me turn this down here. This game did detect a gamepad. So, but I'm going to hit the gamepad mount, uh, the gamepad uh, button, and you can see you can actually place buttons on the touch screen. You can actually place and change to different modes. You can choose which side's the joystick. It's got a virtual analog thing here. So a lot of the things that uh, you saw on the Shield Portable and other devices, it's fantastic because you can actually take these guys and move them around. So no matter what control system a game requires, if it's only touch, it only uses virtual controls, you can use this guy to map the controls to it and you can play it anyway. So that's really a neat selling feature. It's something I can't stress enough, being able to map controls to games that do not allow for controller support. Well, listen, gang, you know, that's about it. Um, there are a couple, there's another couple of things for you to look at here that's playable. Um, yet another illegal Chinese marketplace to go in and infiltrate. So there's more games, things you probably haven't seen. But there's another way of getting more free games in here. Um, yes, quit. Uh, Gamepad Assistant, this is exactly the same thing uh, as we saw before. More Chinese pilfering. So what's hot, the games you have downloaded, um, games that are gamepad specific. Uh, you probably recognize a lot of these games. Um, uh, over here it'll say that there's 4,917 you know, more games for you to go find. Now this is interesting, look at this. This actually categorizes it neatly into systems for you. So Game Boy, Sega, oops, that must have been an update or something around there. Hmm, interesting. Um, so it's all broken down by system for you. How cool is that? Now here's the problem. You have to use their emulators and they have to install their weird Chinese emulators separately. Yeah, so you got to decide whether or not you're willing to risk installing that, if, especially if you're logged into your Google account or something of that nature. Um, so if you went under PSP, for example, uh, there's a huge PSP library available for you to download. Ridge Racer, uh, you recognize the games. So there's God of War right there, and literally it's just a couple of clicks and the game will be here and ready to play. So, again, uh, quite the box. 
All right, so um, this does accept external controllers. You can do OTG over this controller port. So if you want to play multiple games, plug this into your TV, plug in another controller over OTG, and you've got a multiplayer console that you can play on the, t in the TV in the hotel room, whatever. Um, so a pretty neat device. Um, I certainly wouldn't spend $200 on it just from the build quality perspective, uh, but it is definitely powerful enough to take care of your basic Android gaming. Uh, game streaming works, plenty of emulation here. Uh, it's hard not to recommend one of these things. I mean, it's essentially in the uh, footprint of a, uh, a 3DS. You slip it in your pocket, you know, just like you could um, uh, a regular Nintendo product, but this does about 10 billion times more things. It even has the charging light over here like Nintendo's uh, 3DS. So there you have it, folks. Um, again, if you're an emulator, old school aficionado, if you if you want something to take with you, you don't want to have to drag the Shield uh, tablet with you, it's pretty cool. The only things that I would complain about would be these nasty clicky shoulder buttons. These are very hard to get to, by the way. I didn't talk about that. So if you do a lot of PlayStation stuff, you have big hands. Here, let me zoom back so you kind of get a feel here. Right, so if you're, you know, when you're playing like this, your fingers are kind of up, right? So it's really hard to get to these these buttons back here while you're playing, uh, especially these ones that are on the side, right? So you got to kind of lay your got to kind of lay your fingers across it and hope that you can kind of use the crook of your finger to get to that one button. Yeah, it's it's not great, but listen uh, for the for the type of devices, especially if you're a really lazy person and you don't want to have to download your own emulators and set everything up and find the ROMs and things like that. This is a this is a pretty neat device. It's hard not to recommend it, especially if you can pick it up for about 150 or less. Hope you enjoyed looking at this. This is the um, GPD portable device. Uh, you can get it from pretty much any Chinese uh, importer. You can get it from Amazon. Amazon sells them through third-party sellers. So uh, yeah, add it to your collection. I think you'll be properly pleased. This is Shane Armand Rowe with Review Lagoon and NVIDIA Shield Zone. We'll see you next time.